Today, I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way, one click install method to get Stable Diffusion running on your home Windows PC. Let's jump right into it. If you checked out my last video, I showed you how to install Automatic 11.11. It's a multi-step process that can be somewhat challenging if you're new to installing things like Git or Python on your system. Now I have an even easier way to get this going using something called Invoke AI. And there's this third party that's made a one-click installation script that gets all the things like Python and everything else all set up for you. Couldn't be any simpler than that. This is gonna allow you to create amazing stable diffusion AI generated art just like this. This is a model I trained on my beautiful wife. And the very first thing we're going to do is jump over to this Sunaija website. This is going to be linked down in the description, obviously. And if we scroll down, we can see that this is a one click installer. Now there's a couple of really cool things to pay attention to here. You can either download the one click installer or the requirements checker. If you're unsure if you can run this, if you have a powerful enough PC, definitely grab that requirements checker first. That's going to save you a 17 gigabyte download. So pro tip there. The other thing is this is designed just to use with Windows PCs, specifically Windows PCs that are running either an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU. Now the automatic 11.11 tutorial I gave you was just for NVIDIA based GPUs and Windows PCs. This runs with AMD as well. It installs the Rock M. Now if you're running a Mac or Linux, there is a different website for you to go to that we can check out right here. If you go to the Invoke AI GitHub, which I'll also link below, you can check out some of the requirements for both Mac and Linux based systems. With that out of the way, let's continue on. All right, so I'm running an RTX 3090 and a very powerful PC, so I'm not going to do the requirements check. I know that I already meet the requirements. So we're going to download the 17 gigabyte file, and that's going to take about seven minutes. So we'll check back in in a second. Once that's done, go to the directory you extracted it to, in this case, Invoke AI 230 standalone, and double click the Invoke AI underscore starter file. This is the application file that installs everything. The installer has a couple of options that you can select. Do you want a not safe for work filter active or inactive? You can check that box either way. And you want to share access. This is really cool because you can either share access across your Wi Fi. So, for example, it sets up a 192.168 address that you can access from other computers within your network. So if you wanted to use this on a mobile device or tablet, you could do so relatively easily with that. You also have the option of setting up access from the internet. This uses your public IP address to actually allow you to access this on the go. You might have to make some router configuration changes in order for that to work. And also that means that if you share this link with anyone that you don't necessarily trust, they're going to be able to see the type of AI artwork you generate, which might be weird. I don't know what you're into. Once you're happy with how that's set up, go ahead and just click accept license and it should start installing. Once the script finishes, you should be able to go to your web browser and simply pull up localhost colon 9090. This is what it runs on by default is the port. You can also go to your internal IP address or if you set up your router, you can go to your external IP address. Any of those combinations of things should work. It's a very easy to use UI. It also has a number of different stable diffusion models already built in as 2.1, 2.1 with a 768 resolution, stable diffusion 1.5 and in painting 1.5. So really easy to get started and use this. All we have to do is go over here to the prompt section and we can say, uh, let's see, cute elephant. We'll click invoke. We're not going to change any other settings and we're going to see what happens. It's in painting and there we go. That's a darn cute baby elephant. Now, of course, just like automatic 1111 or any other stable diffusion system, you can come down here and change things like the sampler. I like the DP. I like the DPM PP. It's whatever the thing that's on the screen there. That's what you want to use. I happen to like that one a lot. I think in general, even after only using this for a very short period of time, this is a lot simpler to use than automatic 1111. I think it's more newbie friendly. And I think it might actually be the thing that I end up using more often. You can change the height and width as you'd expect, the number of images that are generated from each prompt that you give it, the number of steps. So this is the number of times that it iterates through the image to kind of clean up some of the details. The higher the number, generally the better the image quality, but it takes longer 
to get done. CFG scale, you can think of this as how much it adheres to the prompt. The higher the number here, the more it's going to adhere to the prompt to be a very detailed image of a cute elephant. The lower the number, the more creative influence the AI, the neural network has over the output that is generated. You can, of course, as with anything, set up your prompts up here and your negative prompts, the things that you don't want to have show up. Along this left hand side here, you have things like text to image, which is what we're doing now. Image to image. This is if you wanted to further refine an image that was already generated. You can see that here. You can upscale it, change the resolution, do things like in paint. You have a unified canvas, which I haven't messed with yet, honestly. So I'll let you know how that works out. Nodes, post-processing, and training. So we'll dive into each one of those sections in future videos. But for now, I just wanted to stop there. Now, if you use my video that shows you how to make images of yourself to actually train a model for stable diffusion of images of yourself, to load that in, it's really simple. You just go to the model manager up here in the top right, and you'd go to add new. You're going to add that checkpoint file that you generated and then you're going to come back here and you're just going to select that as the model that you're using up in this drop down up here and instead of stable diffusion you would just select your own checkpoint model it's as simple as it is pretty cool system if you haven't already please hit like and subscribe that really helps me out and it lets youtube know that i'm doing a good job let me know also what you'd like to see in the next video hit me up in the comments be sure to join my discord we share a whole bunch of prompts and things that we've found successful on stable diffusion systems. And it's a great community to be a part of link down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. I'm Brian. This is all your tech. Thank you all so much.